this particular national park. Well, have you clicked uh, like for President Obama? He's on Facebook now. He posted this video this week. And by he, I mean his people, I'm sure. But the president, uh, you know, if you're the president, you probably don't have to worry too much about who he should friend. Probably but Malia. He's not friending anyone. He's having everyone like him. Do you think he has a secret page where he monitors Malia and Sasha? I would if I were him. I think he has secret service that does that for he him. He has people? Yeah, oh, he has some man. people. Must be nice. Deciding who to <laughs> friend or not can get complicated, especially when it comes to family. Recent research just published last month by our own guru, Dr. Carol Brees, and her research colleagues at the University of Chicago and Northern Illinois University, big group here, they found Facebook can be a powerful tool for connection for family members. So we have Carol with us now. and. Talking more about Facebook because it's it's a hot one. It's a hot one. I mean, more than 1.3 billion active users are on Facebook. Wow. And the fastest growing Facebook user group are women age 55 and older. And those are the people who tend to be doing what we call the kin keeping of families, keeping families together and mm -hmm. connected. I think there's this, uh, common sense thought, this general consensus mm -hmm. that people who are spending their time connecting on Facebook don't have the real feeling of connection that oh. people do in real life. But right. your research found? Our research found that actually families who are using Facebook with other family members overwhelmingly felt happier about those family relationships and um, that they saw it as a really powerful tool of connection for a number of reasons. One was that if those families live far apart, when they got together, they had more to talk about. Huh. Because you they saw were the, you, I saw this on Facebook. Yes. I saw you doing this with your family. You would share experiences yeah. virtually. Okay. Some of the common ways that families say that they're using it in a really positive way is just these little daily updates or mm. the little, I'm thinking of you. Um, oh, sure. You know, and so for many families who live far apart, yeah. being able to just share daily events, you know, the prom or homecoming or here's my kid eating Cheerios. I will say, my grandma is a, on Facebook. She's, I believe, 84 years old and loves just kind of checking in on everyone. I love having her as a Facebook friend, but there are some family members that maybe you don't want. Right. Or, uh, how, do you, how do you skirt around that? You're like, oh, geez, I don't want you seeing Do not. Unfriend. <laughs> do that, though. You can't. No, Can well, you? Well, I mean, subtly. I think what you have to do is really think about how do you want to use Facebook. Hmm. You know, we know that with families in particular, there are some rules you need to follow. Facebook is for positive stuff. You don't want to be friending family members so that you can share your viewpoints or have debates about topics you disagree right. with oh, a family member. Oh, you see that all the time. You see the same last name and just fighting it yeah, out on Facebook. absolutely do not. Don't do that. So you got to think about, okay, what's my motive for adding you to Facebook? I have a friend, for instance, who for a long time had two separate Facebook groups. Friends, people who knew him sure. really well, and family, because his family was very conservative. He disagreed with them on a whole host of issues. So he just kept them private. Hmm. It's very uncommon though, um, you know, now in the 21st century, because a lot of people are saying, hey, this is a great social connection for our families, even for organizing events. It's great oh, for yeah. reunions oh. or a weekend get together or brunch or whatever. You know, and even so for families who live in the same vicinity, mm -hmm. they were telling us in this study that they found this use of Facebook for supporting one another. You know, the, the likes, the thumbs up, like way to go, or you know, like, we're thinking of you in this big interview that it was overwhelmingly positive. Interesting. I, I think that people can also take advantage of some of the technology that Facebook offers. Mm -hmm. So if you have a family member, for example, who is a pot stirrer, who loves to post very provocative oh, political things. There's always Ooh. one. It's very easy to just hide that person yes. from your feed so you don't see what, you don't see it. It doesn't Absolutely. irritate you. Right, and they don't have to know. And they don't know. They don't have to know. You know, so if you're going to use Facebook, I mean, I say keep it positive, never engage in debates. If you see something from a family member you don't like, walk away from the comment section. Because yeah. everyone can correct. see that. Everybody. So it's not just even like, because sometimes you get into it through text message and things can be taken the wrong way. This is out there for everyone this to see. This is not a venue for debate or conflict. Mm -hmm. Facebook is about positivity. You know, there's Have there's a reason on there's page? only the link. Have you ever visited my page? <laughs> well, Are you sorry. people listening? It's for positivity. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> You're sort of an outlier, <laughs> and of one, you know, a public yeah. figure. But when you think about families and mm -hmm. privacy, you know, do choose yeah. carefully. And if you don't want to, you know, be hearing from that family member, you know, again, just quietly hide that person. But again, 
Don't. Walk away from any negativity Don't with families. Engage. It's Don't. nice to know it can be a tool for uh, strengthening the bonds of family. Yeah, it was too, really so a very strong, positive result, which I guess I wasn't surprised about. Sure. It's another tool. Exactly. Another yeah. tool. Thanks, Carol.